Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Deck, and I've got a brand new printer from Artillery. Friends, it's time to assemble it, so let's get cracking. All right, so let's see what we got in the box. Very seriously taped. We've got tape in every corner. Right here, we've got our user manual. This is our product quick guide. Bag of parts and components. Filament runout sensor. Our controller. A leveling paper. Here's our filament holder. We have got support rods and they're made of carbon fiber. That's really cool. The power cord. Then this comes out. And right here is our gantry. Love how securely this is packed and holy cow is that sturdy. And finally we got the base. I'll pull that out in a minute once I set the box on the ground. Notice it starts with instructions for use, contents, the parts list, and then unpacking instructions. Step one, grab our gantry, get it in the slots, and then use four M40 screws to lock the gantry in place. Let's track those down from this bag. Notice these all have awesome stickers that label where they go. Of course, we've got the included wrenches, paste. These are your snippers, remove them from the box. This part is for fixing clogs, that's pretty epic. Of course, we've got our antenna, a replacement hot end, zip ties, and a USB drive. Of course, a spatula, that's a nice addition, and all our parts. These are the ones we need right now. So grab your gantry, and before we start building, clip this little tie so that we can move it as needed. If we flip it over, there's also a zip tie stopping it from moving in Z. Awesome to have it get to you all secure like this. Of course, now that we're building, we do need to adjust that. If you look at it right now, the hot end is going to run into it. So we do need to raise it up. I'm going to do that manually by just turning these. The nice thing is that they both spin at the same time so that way we're keeping it aligned. I'm just going to raise it up a couple inches. Notice one knuckle is an inch. And now when we spin the gantry around, do make sure you get your front lined up with your front. Those drop in there just like you'd expect them to and we can connect them from underneath. Note before you start tilting, get the right wrench. It will be the largest of the supplied wrenches. You can see that's the one we need. Now I'm going to tilt this over and I'm going to put in the screws on that side. I won't tighten them. I'm going to just get them started and then I'll do the other side before I finally tighten everything up. Of course, make sure you've got it seated in that hole. That helps it line up super easily. You want to make sure you've got this seated correctly. When you're building a printer, this is one of the most important things to get right. Because if your printer isn't straight, flat, level, or square, your printer will not work the way it is supposed to. Loving how accurate this is all set up. I'm actually going to be able to knock out one of these from this angle as well. Once again, make sure it is fully seated and get that started pretty easily with your finger. And then, of course, wrap it up with your wrench. This is a fantastic time if you've got somebody to help you. If you have got someone to assist you, this is one of the coolest times to have them around. Because anytime you've got four hands on this part of the project, it's better than just two. Final step is to lock them all in place. Next up, we have the filament spool. Notice it simply slides in and locks just like that. And of course, we attach it with the M48. Notice there are two holes in top. Bracket's going to be flush, so this piece goes in the back. Once you got them lined up, of course, make sure you have the wrench ahead of time. And that's easy peasy, even if it's just you. Although, if you have someone else helping you, it is always nice when you're putting one of these together. Just that extra set of hands comes in pretty darn nifty. Next on the list is the display. Once again, screws are listed, so it is super simple to take it off, spin it around, and attach it right there. Removing the display makes that so darn easy. This magnet does make this just a bit more interesting. Keeps grabbing your wrench as you try and tighten it in. But still, pretty darn easy peasy. And here's where we connect the wire, and that snaps in there vertically, just like that. 
Next up, we attach the Wi-Fi connector right back here. Note the nut will turn without the Wi-Fi adapter being moved. Of course, if you take this off, do make sure you reattach it or you're gonna be bumming later. The LED light and the filament here. If you check out the adapters, of course, this is a two and that is a three, so it's not the correct one. This one is the two, so bingo. That just snaps in easy peasy. Note this does have an up arrow, so it's easy to find and connect. Snap it in, and of course, attach Z, just like that. Love when they snap fit that easily. When we bring the head around, notice it's got a bend. It'll go in just like this. Do make sure you open those and push it down in. It also has a little groove here that'll match the connector. Of course, do make sure you push it straight down. And then once you've got it locked in, make sure you've got it in the little metal connector so that it has strain relief. The uh, second wire connects right over here to the X axis. Notice if you've got the little pieces up top, that is the way that one slides in, just like that. Find your little R connector, and this is gonna hold this wire in this location right here. I'm gonna slide it through, and then we're gonna simply screw that in. And when you're done, it'll tighten in just like that. Next up, we're going to do the carbon fiber rods. Notice these go in the top, and these are the ones that go in the bottom. Before we install these, make sure you loosen them a little bit at each end. I found that I needed about a centimeter or so. Make sure the nut is pushed down so it doesn't run into the interface. And then finally, before we put them on, we do need to find the washers, which are in their own dedicated packet. I'm going to start at the top. Once again, I've threaded this out a little bit. There's my gasket. And you can start this with your fingers before you wrap it up with the little Allen wrench. I'm, of course, going to get it adjusted at the bottom as well before I do that. Of course, same steps over here. There's my gasket. And get it thumb started. Down on the bottom, once again, I still extended this so that way it would reach. I'm making sure this nut is moved up so it doesn't run into the base. And then we can get that started. Of course, on this side, same thing. Notice if you're off by a little, just give it a couple tightens to get it so it's in the right spot. You can also wind those up a little bit after you've connected them. Once again, don't forget your gaskets. Find your wrench and wrap it up. Bingo, bango. And of course, these as well. Boom. Do know you can put this on either side, depending on how you got your roll. I'm gonna put mine right here for now. And then once I start playing with it, I'll figure out if I like that, or if I need to switch it to the other side. Of course, once you got it in place, don't forget to lock it in with your Allen wrench. And friends, empty packets. That's a good sign when you get to the end and there's nothing left. Before I power it on, let's peel off some tape. All right, everybody, so it is the moment of truth. Let's power it up. That power switch is on the back. Here we've got our screen coming up for the very first time. I'll peel off that protective display. There goes the LED lighting showing up. And after a moment, we've got an option to enter the boot interface. I'm going to tell it OK so we can see what it is. Notice it is doing its first detections. If we have any issues, of course, we can simply hit cancel. So far, so good, though. There goes the Z-axis detection. Quick nozzle heating detection, which really was about 60 seconds, but I'll zip through that with video editing. Notice there are going to be six steps that just got us through number one. Now it's going to heat to 210 C. There you can see 211, 210. Everything looks groovy right there. So we're going to hit next step. At this point, it's time to do our manual leveling. I am looking underneath and there is nothing on my nozzle. Like it asks us to double check it. We need to wait for the platform and the nozzle to move. We're going to start with point one. When we put the paper underneath, we want a slight bit of friction. 
If it is not tight, you can rotate it a tiny bit until you get the friction you want. Right there, you can hear mine start to scratch. So I'm going to move it back just a tiny bit. And now I'm going to go to point two. Once again, when I put this under, if you move the dial to the left, that raises your bed. And I'm trying to get a little bit of friction. There is nothing grabbing the paper yet. Right there, it just did. So I'm going to back it off a tiny bit. I just want a little bit of friction feel between the two. Those two are good. I'm going to move now to point three. Once again, not touching. This one I'm going to do from the back. And once again, I'm rotating it. What would be clockwise to raise the bed? Right there, it finally grabbed. I'll back it up just a tiny bit. And now let's go to point four. Once again, nothing. So I'm going to rotate this clockwise or to the left. Right there is where it grabbed. And bingo, I can get the right amount of friction that I like. Let's go to the midpoint and see how everything is. Ideally, there should be some friction right here. And there is friction, which is good. I am going to lessen it just a little bit. I'm going to do a quarter turn less on every spot. Actually, less than a quarter turn. And I like that. Friends, at this point, we can go to next step. Now it is going to automatically level. Let's hit auto again. Please make sure there's nothing underneath the nozzle. Once again, double checked, we're good. This move took about 20 seconds. All right, so here we go. Notice it's a long ways away. Let's hit Z0. See how close we can get it. Not touching at all. Let's move down and I'm gonna start with a large movement. As I look, I think I've got one of these I can click. So I'm gonna hit down and right there, I'm right at the bed. So now I'm gonna switch to the point one and I'm gonna go up and I'm trying to get this paper to slide underneath and up and up and up just using these point ones to find the spot where i can get that friction Ooh, right there it is a little bit loose so i'm going to switch to point five and down i'm going to go one more down and i like that that is just barely touching giving me the friction maybe i'm just going to do one up so it's a little less tight just like that and then finally, we need to save it. Notice it does reboot. The steps get saved, and now we can hit next step. Once again, it saves it, which is nice so that way you don't lose your settings. Notice I am not getting English for the first time. So we paused on this screen for a it's two minutes. After about two minutes, we have actually got movement. This screen has not changed. I was getting close to hitting the uh, power off button, but it is starting to do something there. It's now keeping track of our auto leveling. Note it did take several minutes to get ready to do that. So make sure you are super patient if you're stuck on that screen. And this whole process took about five minutes, so I'm going to use video to speed it up as well. And bingo, auto leveling has completed. And note, we're back to English. I'm going to hit next step. Of course, that saves it. And now it's time to load consumables. I am going to work with the supplied filament. Hey, I'm going to clip the twist ties. So the filament is just dangling over and then we can push it through. I'm gonna switch this to this side as I see how this is working. Notice it's that easy to just unlock, rotate and switch it. Will be interesting to see how this looks when I've got a reel instead of this sample filament. And now let's get it loaded. Right here is the input nozzle. I'll push it in as far as it goes and let's hit load. And it is pulling it. 
See my fingers being pulled down as I hold it. It's asking me to see if there's any filament going out. There isn't yet. So I'm going to hit load again. You can physically see that moving. And load. And load. And load. And once again, right there, when they tested it, they were using black. That's a really nice touch. And you see now we have got the clean white coming through. I'm going to hit load one more time. But friends, we've got filament loaded on our printer. Let's hit next and finish. Heck yeah, 3D printer ready to roll. All right, friends, so after about 20 minutes, we have an assembled printer tested, calibrated, and ready for the next step. I do wanna let you know an upcoming video will show you how to get that first print started. The first things I wanna mention about this though is I love the build quality. It is sturdy, it went together well, everything lined up fantastic, it was so cool that all the packets of screws were labeled. Also love the components added with it. Of course, clippers, a spatula, paste just in case you need it. We'll see if that is actually essential. It has a cool clog removal tool, USB stick that has the software they recommend, and of course, that'll be how you can move prints if you're not choosing to use Wi-Fi. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell going to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.